Good morning to one and all. So today's uh, lecture topic for prosthetic dentistry that uh, we are just continuing with the rest of one lectures, guys, uh, is uh, impression techniques in removal. Okay, uh, coming to the learning outcome. Uh, so uh, till the end of the lecture, you will be able to describe the factors influencing support of distal extension base categorize the dual impression techniques and its importance okay so physiological techniques selected pressure techniques okay there are more so i will elaborate and also the corrected cast technique or, or the altered cast technique okay coming to the introduction so support for two tissue supported rpt evolved partially from the abutment teeth and partially from the alveolar bridge okay so this is a very important statement guys please understand Recording both the things together is impossible. So you have to take out two impression techniques and combine it together to, you know, record the impression, okay? So special impression techniques are used to equalize as much possible the support derived from the edentulous ridge and derived from the abutment, okay? So impression must record and relate the tissues under the same loading, okay? Uh, distribute the load over as large as large as uh, yeah guys sorry so uh, the impression must record and relate the tissues under the same loading okay distribute the load over as large as an area as possible record the base accurately guys okay so factors influencing support of distal extension base okay so there are six factors these this is very important so you should be knowing it and uh, yes it can be asked in an exam also guys so please uh, read it carefully okay so contour and quality of the residual ridge extent of residual ridge coverage by the denture base type and accuracy of the impression registration accuracy of the fit of the denture base design of the rpd framework total occlusal load applied so i'll be covering five not the designing okay we have covered the principles last time in the last lecture. Okay. Contour and quality of the residual ridge. Okay. So the ideal residual ridge to support a denture base would consist of a cortical bone with long parallel walls with a broad rounded crest firm fibrous and resilient connective tissue. So this is an ideal situation guys. Okay. So yes. Contour and quality is important for the, of the residual alveolar ridge and if it's ideal, it's better. It'll give you a better support. Extent of residual ridge coverage by the denture base. So broader the residual ridge coverage, the greater will be distribution of the load. So simple example, guys. Um, why do we give flanges in a denture? Can't we give flangeless dentures? Yeah. So we give flanges in the dentures because we want to distribute all the forces laterally. Okay throughout the ridge all right so the denture base should cover as much as the residual ridge as possible and be extended the maximum amount within the physiologic tolerance of the limiting border structures and tissue so that's why we have like limiting structures supporting structures reliefing structures which we do take care of guys okay in the selective pressure technique that's why i'm also going to talk about that. okay coming to the types and accuracy of the impression registration the residual ridge has two forms, okay? So the anatomic form and the functional form. The anatomic form is a surface contour of the ridge when it is not supporting an occlusal load. And functional form is the functional form of the residual ridge, uh, which is the surface contour of the ridge when it is supporting a functional load, okay? So this is not supporting an occlusal load and this is supporting a functional load, okay? So basically the residual ridge and the teeth, okay? So you can divide that into two in that case. Accuracy of the fit of the denture base, okay? So the support of the distal extension is enhanced by intimacy of contact of the tissue surface of the base and the tissues that covers the residual ridge. So guys, the accuracy of the fit of the base is very important for the distribution of forces, for support, to enhance the retention to give a uh, proper functioning okay all things are important so coming to the last one i'm not covering the principles or the designing the 
of the RPD framework. Okay, those principles we have taken in the last lecture, kindly read through that again. Total occlusal load applied is the last one. So the support from the residual ridge should be optimized and sharp shared appropriately within the natural dentition. So this is why there are impression technique which helps us take an anatomic and functional recording at the same time or simultaneously guys okay so the number of artificial teeth the width of the crucial surface so occlusal table is important the number is important and their occlusal efficiency influence the total occlusal load applied for the rpd okay so everything is important guys okay for the distribution of load okay and especially the so now coming to the methods for obtaining a functional support for the distal extension base. So the objective or functional impression techniques, guys, this is known as a functional impression technique, okay, is to pro provide maximum support for the RPD basis. This allows for maintenance of occlusal contact between both natural and artificial dentition and at the same time, minimum movement of the base which would create leverage on the abutment teeth okay so basically in short it means we are taking impression of the functional and the anatomic uh, surface and also we are trying to minimize the force as much as possible so that the force is evenly distributed okay some tissue word movement of the distal extension base is unpredictable sorry, uh, unpreventable, and can be minimized by providing best possible support for the denture base. No single impression material can record both the anatomic form of the teeth and the tissues in the dental arch, understand, at the same time. So basically the functional form of the residual ridge, therefore the secondary or corrected impression method must be used or is used, okay? So impression methods basically are known as dual, there are two of them, okay? So two dual impression techniques the physiologic or functional impression technique and the selective pressure impression technique which we all know okay so the physiologic or functional impression technique so it records the ridge portion by placing an occlusal load on the impression tray as the impression is being made okay and the underlying supporting tissue will be displaced because the displacement will normally occur under function okay all right so to minimize that, we have introduced, oh, sorry, to record that, we have, uh, there, there was an introduction of four techniques, functional impression techniques, Macklin's method, Hindle's method, functional realigning method, and fluid wax method, okay? Also, there is a selective pressure impression technique, which obviously we all use the, on the daily basis and we don't, that's why it's preferred. So this technique equalizes the support between the apartment teeth and the soft tissues, and it also has the advantage of directing the force to the portion of the ridge that are most capable of withstanding the force. This is accompanied by providing relief in the impression tray in selected areas and permitting impression tray to contact the ridge in the other areas. Understand? So that's why we are providing selective pressure technique. Okay, so it can be done in the cases as well. Okay. Now coming to the physiologic techniques, that is the first one is the Macklin's method. So for this dual impression method, a custom impression tray is constructed over a primary cast of the arch, okay? A functional impression of the distal extension ridge is made and then a hydrocolloid impression, alginate impression is made with the first impression held in the functional position with the finger pressure, okay? So the disadvantage of this technique is the finger pressure cannot produce the same functional displacement of the tissue that binding forces produces, okay? So this is how, guys, okay? So you create a tray and you only record this portion, okay? The residual rich portion, all right? So you can see the example of uh, the recording of the edentulous arch guys okay and then you can take a pickup impression uh, with uh, another material if you want in case of this all right okay so light body and uh, alginate on top all right so you're recording both the teeth and the residual ridge in their property okay coming to hindle's technique 
Hindle's method. In this method, first impression of the ridge is made with the zinc oxide original. Then a special tray is used for secondary impression to apply direct pressure uh, through the holes of the tray to underline impression of the ridge. So advantage is it records the tissue under loading and this advantage is that the area of pressure can cause alteration of the tray and cause premature contacts of artificial posterior teeth and final denture so yes this is also a method used guys okay so you can you all can read in detail about these techniques okay in the books functional relining technique okay so in this procedure a functional impression is taken after the fabrication of the partial denture so procedure is a soft metal spacer is placed over the ridge prior to processing um yeah the denture sorry a low fusing uh, modeling plastic is lined over so that is the green stick compound is lined over the tissue on the denture base heated tempered and water molding is carried out and then it is scraped one mm uniformly so that the space for final impression is created okay so advantage is it, it controls the displacement of soft tissues by controlling the amount of relief provided okay guys okay so the main problem associated with these techniques is the failure to maintain correct relationship between the framework and the abutment teeth okay so this is um this is really difficult to maintain guys it can be done but um we try our best to maintain these relationships, okay? So during the impression procedure and failure to maintain accurate occlusal contact following the relining, okay? So it's a little difficult to maintain, okay? Uh, fluid wax technique is one technique which may be used to make a reline impression for an existing partial denture or to correct the distal extension, edentulous ridge portion to the original master cards. The objective of these technique would be to obtain maximum extension of the peripheral bottle or border of the denture base while not interfering with the functional or movable border, okay? Uh, border tissue, sorry, yeah. To record, second, to record the stress bearing areas of the ridge in their functional form, to record the non pressure bearing areas in the anatomical form. So, guys, you see that. All of these are leading to one direction okay yeah so we are trying to record the anatomical and the functional form okay in this procedure a custom tray is made its peripheral extension is corrected and then bottom molding is done then the tray is relieved for impression making procedure molten wax is painted on tissue surface of tray and then the tray is seated in the mouth for five minutes okay the tissue movements are performed and then the process is repeated until the glossy surface is obtained, okay? So one has to carefully uh, use the wax and see that it completely flows, okay? Completely is flown and finally the impression tray is uh, removed after 12 minutes, okay? So the most frequent used wax here is fluid wax is the Iowa and Coretta, okay? Okay, so when the impression evidences complete tissue contact and when the anatomy of the limiting structure is evident, the impression should be replaced in the mouth for the final time. Okay, so the finished impression must be poured immediately as the wax is fragile and subjected to distortion. Okay, so in any case, all the impression should be poured immediately. Yes, I know there are times and weeks you can remain keep the impressions but ideally you should uh, immediately pour the impressions okay so disadvantage is the procedure is time consuming and if time periods are not followed accurately excessive tissue dis displacement occur, okay so guys coming to the selective pressure technique again in this technique pressure is directed to the stress bearing areas of the ridge by selectively relieving the tray okay and denture base is lightly adapted to the tissues over the crust to reduce the effect of occlusal loading, but is closely adapted to tissues in the stress bearing area so that it can withstand forces. Okay, so disadvantage is that the demarcation of tissues which are stress bearing and which are non stress bearing are a little difficult, yes, but we still manage to do it properly, right? That's why. 
So the denture base made from this technique will be closely adapted to and it will have a firm contact with the tissue. In some patients, the soft tissue covering the ridge will be softer and easily displaced. To obtain more relief and prevent excessive tissue displacement, holes definitely must be made in the tray, okay? To permit the impression material to flow through and dissipate pressure that might otherwise occur. Okay, so main disadvantage of this method is over displacement of tissue, which may result to, into inflammatory reaction. And sometimes displaced tissues tend to rebound to its original or former positions, putting additional stress on the abutment leaf. Yes, so this can be one issue. Other is a stable technique, guys. Okay, so coming now to one other corrected cast or altered cast technique. Okay, so basically an altered cast technique is a technique when you, you use in a distal extension case and it allows the ridge to be recorded in a functional form and to be related to the teeth so that when the process is seated, it derives support simultaneously from the teeth and the denture base, okay? So this is an example of the case. Okay, so I'm just presenting a few photos, guys, okay? So here you can see that it's a distal extension case, all right, and... Um, here, a detailed final impression is made and uh, is bottom molded in a bottom molded tray that has been adapted to the lattice work, the lattice work, okay, of the work. Uh, after doing that, guys, what you do is you create indents in the model, okay? So you actually create indents. So complete seating of the framework on the cast is done. And essentially, before it is fixed in place, with the sticky wax. So the placement can be done with the saw and cuts can be planed and the retentive slots can be placed, okay, all right. And then it can be beaded and boxed, guys, and it can be poured properly, okay. And ideally should be poured by another color of dental stone, guys, okay. So you can see the difference, yeah. And that's how it is, okay, guys. So the final working altered cast, it's, and it's more accurate and guys it's kind of recorded both the things so that is an ultra cast technique okay so as in the conclusion i would like to say that though there are different techniques the basic principle remains similar guys and an anatomic impression is used to record the teeth functional impression is used to record the e dentulous area okay so anatomical and functional impressions can be recorded and has to be done for an rpd case okay guys and Thank you so much for patient listening, guys. And please, guys, go and read also from standard textbooks. I keep saying that standard textbooks are McCracken for RPD and Stewart. So any one of the following you can read. If you want, you can refer to articles. You can see uh, the web and... Uh, but do stick to the standard text, okay? Thank you so much for any further questions, guys. I'm always on the polyclinic um, three on the prostate floor. Uh, guys, come and ask me things and first, but then just read and first understand. And then if you have doubts, you all can always come and ask, okay? Thank you so much, guys.